I tried a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Infinite Fusion, except I can't catch a single Pokemon. In fact, I'm not even allowed to pay money to get them. All I'm here for are those free handouts, baby. And lucky for me, every Pokemon game starts with getting a free starter. The only catch being that Professor Oak wants me to complete the Pokedex for him, which in this game has over 176,400 Pokemon. Basically a lifetime of service, but I get a free Pokemon. And if any of my free Pokemon faint, they'll have to be boxed forever. In Kanto, the the best starter choice for a Nuzlocke has always been Bulbasaur, and even though gym leaders all have different Pokemon in Infinite Fusion, they still have the same type, so I went ahead and picked Bulbasaur here too. Besides Oak's parcel, Viridian Pokemart also offers us a free Pokemon, Pukamuku. Known for puking its guts out and nothing else, you call this a gift? You know, the real gift would be if you'd subscribe, because it's free. Training Pukamuku is an absolute nightmare since its only attacking move is Bide, so I pretty much had to rely on Leech Seed from Bulbasaur to get any levels at all, and once Bulbasaur reached the level cap, I couldn't train Sticky anymore. This means going into the first gym battle with Brock, I'm not exactly ideally leveled. While I could just fuse together Pukamuku and Bulbasaur into some untold monstrosity, because Brock's first Pokemon is GOG, a flying type, I actually need them unfused and to connect with my first Leech Seed. This gets Stinky a little bit of health back before I swap out into Pukamuku, who in this case is actually going to be doing Arceus's work. While Sticky basically doesn't have an offense presence to speak of, its defenses are both base 130, which is pretty incredible. We're almost getting the same amount of health back from Leech Seed as we're taking from Gust. Rock Tomb ends up doing a bit more damage and lowering our speed, which doesn't really matter when your base speed is 5. I go for another Bide, since it's the only thing I can do, and GOG ends up going down to Leech Seed. Unfortunately, I'm locked into Bide as Dignix comes in, but with our massive defenses, a Dig still doesn't do too much damage, and I can get a switch into Stinky. I'm hit by Rage as I switch and then outsped by Rock Tomb the following turn. Vine Whip deals massive damage taking Dignix into the red and a second Rock Tomb takes Stinky down to just 3 HP before I can finish off the fight to claim my very first gym badge. Listen up, buddy, you keep your stupid fish. If it ain't free, it ain't for me. With Bulbasaur evolving and just barely making it through the next rival fight, we've got to make preparations for the fight versus Misty. We're not actually able to get any new encounters, so I go with the only option available to me and fuse together Ivysaur and Pukamuku into this. To support its bulb, Ivymuku's legs grow- What legs? Because we fused our only two Pokemon together, we're going into the boss fight versus Misty with only one. Here's the catch, though. Our new fusion is a grass and water type. On top of that, we've got access to all of Bulbasaur's poison moves, meaning that we not only quad resist water, but we can also go for a poison powder Venoshock combo to take out Jigglydean. However, our secondary grass typing and access to poison moves comes in most handy versus our second Pokemon, Audu, which itself is also grass water, meaning we quad resist both of its stabs and have super effective damage with poison. With Misty defeated, we do get access to one new encounter through Infinite Fusion's quest system. We actually could have gotten a free Pineco back in Pewter City from a quest, however, we would have had to catch a Pokemon in order to complete it, and while catching Pokemon isn't allowed, there's nothing that says I can't catch an old boot with my old rod. We can then head back to Cerulean City, where this fisherman is looking for his lost boot, and even though we didn't find the right one, he accepts it and gives us a Wooper for the reasonable price of free. Wooper is the perfect Pokemon for us to pick up right now. It's a ground type right before we have to face the electric type gym, but if that weren't enough, it even evolves as early as last level 20 into Quagsire. Once we've evolved our Whoopy Boy, we can't actually get any more encounters before having to take on the third gym leader, Lieutenant Surge. And while Quagsire's ground type completely counters his electric moves, we still only really have Mud Bomb to work with, which is incredibly inaccurate. In frustration, after missing my first Mud Bomb, I start going for Slam, but I manage to miss it as well. Because of this, Salty takes some unnecessary damage before I'm able to take out the Volt B. Surge's second Pokemon is Piccolo, which serves to further frustrate me by lowering my accuracy with Mudslap, however, I still manage to connect with Water Pulse. If all that missing wasn't enough, Rybuzz increases evasion with a double team, but I somehow manage to connect with a Mud Shot. Lightning doesn't strike twice, however, and I manage to miss after connecting with the third, taking Rybuzz into the red and activating its Citrus Berry. Listen, the most frustrating thing in any Pokemon game is dealing with evasion tactics, and this Rybuzz decided to put me through a world of pain. Lieutenant Surge heals almost all the way up to full with a Super Potion, and I just kept 
to missing mud shots. Once I managed to connect, not only did Lieutenant Surge heal all the way back up to full again, but it's pretty much too late since Salty's now deep into the red. At this point, I have no choice left but to swap out into Stinky, who at least won't get hit by an electric move on the switch. Because of the grass type, at least Thunder Punch isn't super effective, and I somehow managed to connect with Venoshock. The second punch hits, and if I miss, Stinky goes down. Holy sh**. If I would've missed that Razor Leaf, we'd have to reset the run. Good job, Stinky. Well, that was a close call, but beating Surge means we can pick up a few free Pokemon. With access to Cut, we can talk to this lady at the daycare who gives us a free Pokemon egg. Then before heading east of Cerulean, I go to Bill's house. Bill wants us to turn ourselves into Data and go to the virtual world to chase down a Pokemon. Under normal circumstances, I never go along with this. Seems like a terrible idea. However, I did say there's nothing I wouldn't do for a free Pokemon, and this Porygon is an amazing one to get. The only reason Porygon is so good is because of the download ability, which is totally nuts. Finally, before leaving, I spend about 10 minutes on my bike until my egg eventually hatches. The egg hatches into a Togepi, which won't even be able to be a good Pokemon for a very long time. I am able to evolve it into a Togetic pretty much right away, but the Togepi line doesn't really do much until it becomes Togekiss. On our journey towards Celadon, we have to pass through Rock Tunnel, where we can actually pick up our next free Pokemon from this guy, a Hone Edge. Didn't know we were playing Zelda instead of Pokemon, but I am not complaining about this gift. Before reaching Celadon, we make a pit stop in Lavender Town where we easily take out our rival. Hey, who you calling a stink? Oh, yeah. She is a little bit smelly. Reaching Celadon City, you might think we have a ton of gift Pokemon to pick up, but the ones we buy at the game corner, we have to buy, so they're unacceptable. This means there's really only one free Pokemon to find here, and it's the free Eevee. Well, okay, it's not exactly free in the full sense of the word, since this lady does want us to take Eevee for a walk before she actually gives it to us. However, since I've already given my entire future to Professor Oak's dream project, I don't really see the problem with receiving this free Eevee for a simple walk around town. With the level cap at 35, a lot of our Pokemon can actually evolve, the first of which being Stinky into Venusaur. Second is Pointy, evolving into Dublade. And finally, with a simple purchase of a Thunderstone from the department store, Fluffy evolves into Jolteon. I then take that Jolteon and fuse it together with Porygon to create Porygon. With our newest abomination created, we're ready to take on the fourth gym leader, Erika. The reason it's so powerful to fuse together Porygon with Jolteon isn't really because of download since we only get an attack boost, but because we get access to Ice Beam. This allows us to immediately one-shot the Exeguiduo before we have to swap out versus Tanape and go into Sunny, who can tank a Seismic Toss. I'm then hit by a second Seismic Toss, taking me down into the red, but I can retaliate back with a Flamethrower, dealing massive damage before I've got to swap out into Pointy. This way, I dodge Seismic Toss with my Ghost Type, and Ancient Power barely does anything, simply allowing me the KO with an Aerial Ace. Erica's final Pokemon is Vile Bell, and since I resist Grass, I figured I was fine here, but Pointy actually takes a ton of damage from Solar Beam, so after Vile Bell just barely survives another Aerial Ace and gets some health back from a Citrus Berry, I'm forced to swap out this time into Fluffy, and again, I just get an attack boost. Fortunately, even without that special attack boost, Ice Beam is still doing over half, allowing me to take out the Vile Bell in a couple of Ice Beams and granting me the fourth gym badge. With Fuchsia City's gym coming up, we're not actually allowed any new encounters, so I decide to fuse Pukamuku and Quagsire, and what do you know, Pukasire gives the video a thumbs up. Take the hint and just like the video. Koga is a deceptive gym leader in this game. He's not the type of boss that's gonna take you down with hard-hitting moves. He's gonna whittle you down over time with poison. Unfortunately, my one Steel type gets immediately critical hit. Not a fantastic start since I'm gonna need as much health on Pointy as possible, unfortunately getting down into the yellow before I'm able to take out Venomer. Beether is next, so I've gotta swap out, sending in Fluffy, who once again unfortunately gets an attack boost. Toxic spikes come down on the switch, and then the Beether goes for an agility, as unfortunately Thunderbolt doesn't quite do half. Luckily, it seems to just have been a low roll, however, since a second Thunderbolt is enough to take Beether out, sending in Magnifying. Wappy doesn't have any great moves to hit this thing, so I swap out into Sticky, who immediately gets poisoned. Yeah, if we're gonna have to swap around a whole lot, this is gonna become a huge problem very quickly. Unfortunately, Surf is not doing nearly enough damage, so I am forced to swap out, sending in Fluffy, who also gets poisoned. 
This time around, however, I do get the special attack boost from download, giving me the confidence to just one-shot Magnathing with Thunderbolt. Finally, Koga has the bulky Chinook, and my team is looking pretty sad. Everything's taken a lot of damage, or is poisoned, or both, so I'm forced to swap into my only Pokemon with full health, Stinky. This means I can absorb the toxic spikes, but Takedown is doing a lot more damage than I expected it would. My leftovers have given me just enough health to survive another Takedown, and this time I managed to land the Leech Seed. The Leech Seed is going to be incredibly important here, giving us so much health back because of Chinook's massive base HP. Finally, I can swap into Pointy, who's kind of the perfect Chinook counter since it can't hit me with any stab moves whatsoever. The combination of Ghost and Steel is just immune to both Normal and Poison. However, because Chinook has Double Team and Soft Boiled, that Leech Seed is going to come in very much handy. Because of Double Team, there's no guarantee I'd be hitting a single Brick Break, so with the Leech Seed, I'm pretty much guaranteed the victory, granting me my fifth Gym Badge. With Koga defeated, we can't progress on our journey before we've saved the Sylph Company. Fortunately, however, doing so is very much in our interest since we can get a few free Pokemon, starting with Lapras from the Scientist. Definitely not a bad pickup with the bulk and amazing moves that it could give to another Pokemon. We're not quite out of the woods yet though, since we have to do these guys a favor and defeat Giovanni. This battle is incredibly annoying in Nuzlocke, much like any other multi-battle throughout the Pokemon games. We're facing off against an incredibly strong opponent, and we've got an unpredictable, terrible ally. Immediately, Hornlad actually does something not so stupid and hits Primarina with a super Super effective wing attack. Ryras, however, unfortunately stopped my plan of poisoning it by going for a safeguard. Well, there goes like my entire strategy, and now I'm stuck versus these incredibly strong Pokemon with Sticky, who basically can't do anything. By some miracle, Nidogeot actually takes out Primarino, sending in Gengkhan. This is, however, where Nidogeot stops being useful and just starts going for Roost. After a surf, Giovanni decides to withdraw Ryras, sending in his boss Pokemon, Sand Queen. Sticky just barely manages to hang on after an outrage, but at this point, I really can't switch anything in. Nothing really wants to take a ground type move or an outrage, so I'm pretty much forced to just stay in. It sucks that we have to lose two Pokemon at once since Sticky is fused together, but one like equals one prayer. I swap in Lapras as Genkon manages to break through confusion and hit Nidogeot with a Dark Pulse, which doesn't get the KO. Nidogeot is useless as ever, firing an Earth Power right into an immunity. At least Lapras picks up the KO, but this is still an uphill battle. We still have to deal with that Ryrus, and Genkon is still an insane threat. It at least hits itself in confusion before Nidogeot once again fires off an Earth Power right into an immunity. I then fire off a Surf, taking both Genkon and Ryrus into the red, but with the Sandstorm, it's at least going to be enough to take out Genkon. Finally, Hornlad connects his only two brain cells, taking out the Ryrus with a Zen Headbutt, and at least granting us the victory. It's sad that it came at the cost of our first death, in reality losing two Pokemon. Luckily, helping out the richest man in Kanto comes with perks. The first of which being my choice of the three Joe starters. The second of which being a free Master Ball, which I can't do anything with. Having freed Sylph Company means we can get a lot of upgrades for the team, starting by evolving into Feraligator. We can also take the train to Goldenrod City, allowing us access to a lot of evolutionary stones, meaning we can finally evolve Togetic into Togekiss. It also means we can get our hands on a Dusk Stone to evolve into Aegislash. I decide to fuse it together with Feraligator into Aegiligator. Looks cool though. I also fuse together Lapras and Togekiss before heading to the National Park where I can pick up an egg from this old man. With all the preparation out of the way, it's time to take on the sixth gym leader, Sabrina. This is the entire reason I fused together Aegislash and Feraligator since this way I get a Steel type that also has access to Crunch. Her first Pokemon is the Fairy type Hitmime, however, which I can just take out in a single Iron Head. Ezreon is a Dark Psychic type, so Crunch really won't do too much damage, so I decide to swap out into Chunky, who doesn't take too much from a Dark Pulse. Unfortunately, I get flinched by a second Dark Pulse as it then goes for Future Sight, but then I connect with an Ice Beam for not quite half. Ezreon then sets up Light Screen, so my subsequent Ice Beams are doing terrible damage. In fact, two more Ice Beams aren't even enough to take Ezreon out, and after Future Sight, I'm left on just 20 HP. At this point, I'm forced to swap, so I send in Fluffy, who's eternally cursed to always get an attack boost instead of a special attack. A special attack boost here would have been great, too, since it probably means that Signal Beam would have KO'd. Regardless, it only means I take a little bit of extra damage before taking it out with a second Signal Beam. Alabro is third, but it just gets wasted by a single Thunderbolt, sending in her final Pokemon, Genkazam. I decide to swap into Pointy, as the Genkazam for some reason goes for Psycho.
Echo Cut. The next turn I take a lot more damage from a Shadow Ball, however, a quad effective crunch is all it takes to finish off Genkazam, granting us the sixth gym badge. You know, if you're looking for free handouts, Saffron City really is the place for you. Not only do we get two free Pokemon from Silph Co., but we can also pick our choice of Hitmon at the Fighting Dojo. I end up picking Hitmonchan since access to all the elemental punches seems pretty useful. I then separate my Aegle Legator in order to fuse the fearsome Hitmon Legator. As if crocodiles weren't threatening enough, this one also punches you. One of the most frustrating things about playing Pokemon as a kid is you only get one starter through your playthrough ever. But in Infinite Fusion, if we talk to Green, we can get a very special Pokemon egg. Which of course means I'm gonna have to do a lot more bicycling. Luckily, I still have that egg we picked up at the National Park before challenging Sabrina, meaning my steps are going towards hatching two eggs at once, the first into Ralts and the second into Charmander. I then head back to the now liberated Silphco where the grateful receptionist hands me an upgrade. With it, I'm able to evolve into Porygon 2 and fuse it together with Venusaur for the cutest thing I've ever seen. I then fuse Jolteon and Charizard together into Charion. Gardevoir and Aegislash together do look epic, but this alternate sprite we can switch to is absolutely stunning. Finally, before taking on Blaine, I take on these Beedrills in a side quest where we don't have to capture any Pokemon at all, which in the end gives us a fossil reviving into Aerodactyl. Going into the fight versus Blaine, I felt incredibly confident, which is a feeling you should never have during a Nuzlocke. Initially, things go exactly to plan. A flying gem boosted Air Slash is enough to just take out Gludash in one shot. Magdon is second, so expecting a quad effective ground type move here, I swap into Hangry, who of course dodges it with its flying type. I then go for a Rock Tomb, dealing way more damage than I was expecting before a Fire Punch barely does anything. Blaine starts healing up, but once again, a second Rock Tomb takes Magdon below half, which means a third Rock Tomb is all it takes to knock. Magdon out. Third out is Blaine's 9-9, which again, is a pretty sus Pokemon for a guy with a mustache to have. Yummy comes in on a Volt Absorb, but unfortunately I miss my Thunder as 9-9 hits a Confuse Ray. Not wanting to play the RNG game, I decide to swap out into Angry to tank a Fire Fang. Expecting a Thunder Fang, I switch again into Yummy, but 9-9 goes for another Confuse Ray. Ugh. Again, I swap out into Angry, this time with a slightly different plan. After I tank the Fire Fang, I decide to just get Confused so that there's no chance that 9-9 goes for Confuse Ray the next turn, allowing me a free switch into Yummy. For the better accuracy, I go for Thunderbolt, which unfortunately comes at the cost of dealing good damage. However, I manage to connect with the Thunder the next turn, but even still, it's not enough to take 9-9 out. I'm lucky Blaine doesn't heal, and another Thunderbolt does the job. Finally, I have to deal with Chardactyl, which looks awesome. I stay in, but Chardactyl almost takes me out with a crunch, and a Thunderbolt isn't enough to do the job. So I decide to swap out, not thinking about the fact that Chunky is an Ice type. For some reason, I thought I'd fused it into a Water Fairy type, but unfortunately, Chunky just gets burned after taking a ton of damage from Fire Blast and immediately gets taken out. A terrible way to lose two more Pokemon, but at least I figure Hangry will be faster since Charizard should be dragging down the average speed of Aerodactyl. This is not the case, and Hangry immediately gets gets caught up in Skydrop. I've had buggy interactions with this move before in this game, and unfortunately, this time, it leads to me losing my Aerodactyl. This fight quickly went from manageable to terrible, but at least Angry can survive a Fire Blast just barely and finish off the fight with a Rock Tomb. Losing three of our Pokemon right before one of the most critical moments in the game is terrible, especially since we're very quickly running out of free Pokemon to pick up. One of these Pokemon I learn is actually a free egg we can pick up from this breeder. Similarly, there's one more of these eggs we can pick up from a breeder south of Celadon. These eggs hatch into completely random fusions, so it's all luck of the draw, and I'm pretty happy to get Tauros and Abra. That said, I'm way more stoked to get my favorite Pokemon Dunsparce and Snubble in the second egg. And having both Snubbles Intimidate and Fairy type is actually a huge boost to the team. Though I evolve it into Snubsparce, however, Alaros I end up taking apart so that I can put my two Glass Cannon Psychic types together into Gardakazam. This means I get to fuse Aegislash with Tauros, which actually looks really awesome. Now that we've managed to scrape together a full team, we can think about taking on one of the toughest bosses in all of Pokemon history. Giovanni has managed to fuse together all three of the legendary birds, and on top of that, he gets three attacks for every single turn, making this an insanely difficult boss fight. However, with the Pokemon available to us, I put together somewhat of a plan, starting out with a Fire Gem boosted Fire Blast to immediately take out Zapmulkuno A. This puts us in a great position since Yummy resists both Fire and Electric types. I managed to get Zapmulkuno M incredibly low with a Thunderbolt, but get very low myself before I can finish it off with a 
another Thunderbolt. It gets incredibly close, however, since a drill peck takes Yummy down to just 8 HP, forcing me to swap out this time into Derpy. This way I get an Intimidate to power down drill peck, but more importantly, I'm baiting out the Thunderbolt, allowing me to swap into Yummy and gain a lot of health back with Volt Absorb. Next, I swap out into Pointy to get yet another Intimidate, and this time resist the drill peck, doing barely any damage at all before swapping back into Yummy to gain even more of that Yummy health. Unfortunately, Zapdos sets up a light screen here, meaning that my Thunderbolts barely do any damage either. However, at least I can just continue swapping out to get myself back as much health as I need. So that's exactly what I do, once again swapping to Pointy to tank a drill pack before swapping back in Yummy to eat that delicious electricity. This happens exactly in time for Light Screen to wear off, so Fire Blast deals a massive amount of damage before I can finish off Zapdos' remaining health with a flamethrower. I outplayed you this time, Giovanni. Before leaving the Sevi Isles, I pick up the network adapter, which when given to this woman gives you a choice of a Sinnoh starter. I end up picking Chimchar since this is the last encounter we're able to get, and then fuse it together with Tauros, which looks pretty insane. Also, since my Jolteon and Charizard fusion has now done what I wanted it to do, I fuse it together with Alakazam for Alion. Giovanni has not given up quite yet, challenging us to the final gym battle. He starts out with Rhyparis, but it's time for our starter to make another star appearance. I immediately lock myself into Petal Dance, which with a Grass Gem just immediately takes Rhyparis out. Glycitar comes in second and deals massive damage with Megahorn, but a Petal Dance once again takes it out. At this point, I was kind of expecting to get confused, so I was a bit scared when Gochamp comes in, but I just end up outspeeding and also take it out with Petal Dance. Fourth out is Rylax, and since I'm confused, I decide to swap out into Derpy to get an Intimidate as I'm struck by a very powerful Earthquake. I swap out once again, this time into Angrier, who also gets off an Intimidate to get Rylax to minus minus two before an earthquake once again deals massive damage. With Rylax at minus two, I feel comfortable swapping in Stinky on a resisted hit, however, it just ends up missing a horn drill, allowing me to recover up almost to full health. It keeps doing fairly pitiful damage with Earthquake, allowing me to heal up all the way to full with Recover. My special attacks won't be too great against Rylax, so I decide to set up Leech Seed in order to whittle it down turn by turn, and also gaining a massive amount of health back because of its huge HP. From there, I get a very lucky freeze, causing Giovanni to swap his Electatrio right into a super effective Ice Beam. This causes Giovanni to heal, giving me a free opportunity to lock myself into Petal Dance and take Electatrio down in one shot. Rylax comes back in and gets gets immediately full restored, as I am of course locked into Petal Dance, which does massive damage. As Giovanni heals again, I end up getting a high roll, taking out the Rylax, and thus gaining me the final Gym Badge. With all the Gym Badges in hand, I need to prepare my gift Pokemon for the final challenge of the Elite Four. This means I need to take apart my Pokemon and make the final decisions on which fusions to bring, starting out with Aegislash and Charizard, using into possibly the coolest combination I've ever seen. I then head back to Goldenrod to pick up a dubious disc to evolve into B new gun. Z. Yeah, we need to reverse this thing's fusion as soon as possible, and luckily, the other form looks absolutely amazing. And with that, my final Elite Four team was assembled, starting with Stinky, with Adaptability, Petal Dance, Ice Beam, Recover, and Leech Seed. Angry, with Close Combat, Earthquake, Ice Punch, and Crunch. Luffy, with Psychic, Thunderbolt, Psy Shock, and Shadow Ball. Angrier, with Close Combat, Flare Blitz, Acrobatics, and Mock Punch. Derpy, with Play Rough, Earthquake, Brick Break, and Ice Fang, and Pointy with Flamethrower, Air Slash, Shadow Ball, and King Shield. My first Elite Four opponent is of course Lorelei with her team full of Ice types. She starts with Magong, leading me to send in Fluffy. This way I can begin with an Electric Gem boosted Thunderbolt, which will just take Magong out. The Dark Ice type Weerus comes in second, so I decide to swap out into Angry. This way I can resist the predictable Dark type move, which unfortunately gets a critical hit twice in a row. However, that still doesn't stop me from landing the quad effective close combat to take Weerus out in one shot. Jingrowth comes in third, so I swap out into Pointy. Pointy's then hit by a Draining Kiss, which he quad resists, he's pretty much given up on love. Subsequently sending Jingrowth to the afterlife with a flamethrower. Fourth out is Lorelei's Tentister, which we can't stay in again with our fire type, so I swap out into Fluffy. Tentister then sets up Stealth Rock, which unfortunately isn't gonna stop it from being one hit KO'd the next turn by a Thunderbolt. Finally, we have to deal with Mambro, so I swap out back into Pointy 
going to you who only has to deal with an Ice Fang on the Switch, before once again delivering a devastating one-hit knockout with a Flamethrower. Our second opponent is Bruno, and admittedly, our team is a lot weaker to fighting than Ice. I once again decide to lead with Fluffy, since a Psychic Gem Boosted Psychic is enough to take out his lead, Mavire. With one down, he sends in his second Pokemon, Marichan. And for this one, we don't even need a Psychic Gem, taking it out in one clean hit. Steechamp, however, is unfortunately not weak to Psychic, so I swap out into Angry as I'm struck by a Crunch. My defense getting lowered is not great, but at least an Earthquake deals over half damage. Bruno also just goes for Crunch again for some reason, then withdrawing Steechamp into Sick Cross, allowing me to hit it with a very powerful Earthquake. He then decides to heal up, which unfortunately is just a losing strategy. Since Angry's faster than Sea Cross, I can just continue firing off Earthquake and I'll eventually get the KO without him doing damage. Realizing his mistake, Bruno switches out, which unfortunately for him, just takes care of his Steechamp. Champ. Magnanix is fourth, and even though we have a quad effective move, we have to swap out because of Sturdy. Angry very fortunately dodges a Zap Cannon before firing off a Mock Punch just to break Sturdy and then take out the Magnanix with a close combat. Finally, Bruno only has Seacross left, but since it's already lost some health, it's easy to just take it out with another close combat, getting us the win. Thus, we have to face the third Elite Four member, the Ghost Type Master, Agatha. Once again, Fluffy completely dominates the first Pokemon with a gem boosted Thunderbolt. Agatha sends in her dark type Umter, so we have to swap out, but luckily we've got a great answer in Derpy. Derpy's normal type means we can't be hit by ghost type moves at all, and Dark Pulse is barely doing anything. Derpy, on the other hand, has the super effective play rough, dealing a ton of damage not quite able to take out Umter. And after Agatha heals up, I just hit Umter with another play rough, taking it into the red once again, with a third dealing with it permanently. Unfortunately, there's not much I can do about this next Pokemon, Wobgar. Because of Shadow Tag and the fact that I don't don't have U-Turn or Volt Switch or anything that swaps me out, I'm stuck just fighting this thing. It starts out by going for Destiny Bond, but I'm not near strong enough to take this thing out, even if I would have hit that play rough. Oddly, Wobgar starts going for Mirror Coat instead of Counter, which would just immediately kill me. Going into this fight, I was sort of prepared to lose something to this thing because there's really nothing you can do against Shadow Tag and Wobbuffet's nonsense. However, it just never goes for Counter, so Derpy lives to see another day. Gandoom is fourth, so I swap out into Angry, who dodges a 50% and accurate Inferno. Shadow Ball does a ton of damage as I take Gendoom down into the red with an Earthquake. Agatha swaps out into Snorgar, but not wanting to be taken out by a Shadow Ball, I decided to swap out as well into Angrier. After getting an Intimidate, I go for a Flying Gem boosted Acrobatics, which I don't think works in this game since Acrobatics with no item just does more damage. Because I'm doing a lot less damage than I'm taking, I swap out into Stinky, who immediately gets paralyzed by a Body Slam. Snorgar unfortunately gets a free full heal with Rest as I just get fully paralyzed. I then miss Leech Seed twice in a row, making that rest entirely free before I finally connect to start draining this thing for its massive HP. Before swapping out, I decide to go for Recover, which combined with the Leech Seed recovery actually takes me all the way back to full. I decide to swap in Pointy, who unfortunately isn't a ghost type, so I take resisted damage from Body Slam instead. I go for King Shield to dodge a Shadow Punch, which more importantly lowers Snorgar's attack. Agatha then heals up with Rest again, and unfortunately, I only have special attacks on Pointy meaning that we're not going to be dealing a lot of damage with either Flamethrower or Air Slash, but Leech Seed is definitely doing work. Sadly, the damage I'm able to do just falls short of taking Snorgar out before it can heal all the way back up to full again with Rest. Realizing this is a perpetual situation I can't win, I decide to swap out into Angry while I have the chance in Snorgar's sleeping. This ends up working out perfectly, since a Dark Gem boosted Crunch, while not enough to take Snorgar out, together with the Leech Seed, is enough to finally be rid of it. This means we only have to deal with Gendoom, which just misses an Inferno, allowing me to take it out with Earthquake and sealing the win. Because Agatha's Wobgar decided to be merciful, we actually have six Pokemon going into the final Elite Four fight versus Lance. Instead of leading with Fluffy, this time I send in Stinky, who's just barely able to tank an Outrage and set up a Leech Seed against Dragados. Now that I've got the Leech Seed out and know that I can swap in my Fairy-type for free against an Outrage, I send in Derpy, who also lowers Dragados's attack with Intimidate, and it gets confused. Dragados does does manage to break through confusion just to set up a rain dance and immediately go down to a fairy gem boosted play rough. That's one of Lance's threats dealt with, and second out is Toganite. The worst it can do to me is Moonblast, dealing a whole ton of damage before Derpy's play rough under delivers massively. Forced to swap out, I swap into Pointy, who can quad resist Moonblast, however, Lance just decides to heal all the way up to full. Lance goes for the Moonblast, dealing pathetic damage, but unfortunately getting a special attack drop, meaning my flash cannon doesn't quite do half. Toganite fishes for the Omni Boost with Ancient Power, but doesn't quite.
white get it, allowing me to hit a flash cannon, take it into the red, but also getting that special defense drop. Once Togenite's fully healed, it goes for another ancient power, but this time my flash cannon is dealing way more than half damage. I'm hit with an outrage, which is just barely not enough to take me out, allowing me to finish Togenite off with another flash cannon. I ran a Dactyl as third, and there is no way I can stay in against this thing. I swap in Derpy just to get an Intimidate off, however, it's hit by a Dragon move, which doesn't affect it, so I can keep it alive and swap in Angrier. This way, I get a second Intimidate, and Tyranodactyl even misses a Head Smash. Sadly, Angrier doesn't really have any moves to deal with this thing, so unfortunately, Derpy has to meet its end. With a free switch, Fluffy can do its thing and take Tyranodactyl out with an Electric Gem boosted Thunderbolt. Second to last, we face Poridra, which, unfortunately for Lance, gets an Attack Boost instead of Special Attack Boost. It deals quite a bit of damage with tri attack so I decide to swap out the next turn, sending in Angry. Dragon Pulse connects, almost dealing half of Angry's health, however, since Angry's faster, a close combat will be enough to leave Lance with only his final Pokemon. Typhnare really isn't that big a threat to Angrier, so I can freely swap it in, taking Typhnare out with a few acrobatics. I didn't get through Lance with my entire team intact, but then again, I didn't expect to versus Agatha. Not all of my freebies need to make it to the end, as long as we've still got one standing at the end of this fight. My team and I are here to show the world that cheap may be good, but free is always best. Hornlad sends in Nidogeot, so I send in Fluffy to even the odds and take it out with a single Electric Gem boosted Thunderbolt. Immediately, I'm faced with one of the biggest problems on his team, Ripe Mortar. I need to weaken this thing, and unfortunately, I only have one Intimidator that's weak to Drill Run. I pivot out immediately from Angrier to Angry, who after the Intimidate can survive a Drill Run with above half health. I then go for a quad effective Water Gem boosted Aqua Jet, dealing a whole whole ton of damage. And because I'm able to survive another drill run, a second Aqua Jet seals a deal and taking Ripe Mortar out. Tautor comes in third, rudely intimidating Angry, so I swap to Angrier to intimidate it right back. Sadly, even after the attack drop, a Zen Headbutt is still enough to take out Angrier. My best option is sending in Pointy and immediately going for King Shield to lower Tautor's attack even further. Even though Tautor basically can't do any damage now, I still get flinched. So I have to wait till the next turn to deal some damage with Flash Cannon. Hornlad then heals up and starts fishing for flinches, but doesn't quite get so lucky, and thus being hit by another flash cannon. I guess realizing that this is a lost matchup, he just goes for Giga Impact, which unfortunately for him, means he has to recharge the next turn, and allows me to take Tautor out with a couple of flash cannons. Next is Hornlad's own Charizard Fusion, which unfortunately has mine outmatched, so I have to swap out into Angry, who manages to get off an Aqua Jet before getting taken out by Hydro Pump. Already Hornlad is even the odds, and we're both down to three Pokemon, so I send in Fluffy as he heals up to full, and Thunderbolt deals a massive amount of damage. In fact, a second one just wipes his starter out. Fifth out is Electados, which with Dragon Dance is an insane threat, so I immediately swap into Stinky, who can easily tank a waterfall. Horn Guy then goes for the Dragon Dance, boosting his attack and speed, as I manage to connect with Leech Seed, at least giving me a little bit of health back. Horn Lad could have hit me with anything here, but with his free reign, he sets up the rain, allowing me to hit him with a Petal Dance, which is enough to just take him out. Finally, Horn Lad has Star Kazam, and if it takes us out, we should be able able to seal the win with Fluffy. However, not even a rain-boosted crit surf is enough to take Stinky out, and in true poetic fashion, our very first Pokemon deals the final hit of the run. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I proved that you can use only free-to-play Pokemon to beat a Pokemon Infinite Fusion Hardcore Nuzlocke. That's right, you don't have to pay to win, not a single Poke Dollar. Let me know what you think the coolest fusion I used in this video was, and hey, feel free to subscribe.